Okay, so uh, thank you uh, very much. My name is uh, Simon Cameron, and I apologise. I'm not going to use slides. I thought uh, I won't bore you uh, with slides, and maybe just try and bore you by speaking to you instead. Uh, um, so we'll see how that one goes. Uh, if I'm going too fast, do please do tell me to slow down. I appreciate sometimes my uh, Scottish uh, brogue might uh, confuse. So happy to do that. So uh, where are we on the journey with uh, local democracy and with consul as, as part of that? Just to give you a bit of kind of an understanding of where we are in Scotland and things that are going on, because this is part of that bigger movement and obviously the bigger kind of global, global movement that is thankfully getting us to ask the question, well, what does our democracy look like? What should it look like? And how can we continue to move it forward? Because democracy should never ever be just one thing. It should always be a journey that we're on. So that's, that's kind of a critical part for me. And in Scotland, since uh, devolution and the creation of the Scottish Parliament, there's always been a look to say, what is the relationship between the spheres of government? And in Scotland, we talk about spheres, not tiers, uh, that this is actually what we do together and should do together, because ultimately we're trying to improve the quality of life of everybody in Scotland, and we're trying to tackle the persistent inequalities that we've got and, and remove them from uh, being the case. Uh, and as such, we got, we, 10 years down the road in uh, 2010 or two, 2009, and we had the Christie Commission report, which set out for Scotland, what does public service reform look like? Why are we not tackling these uh, consistent um, inequalities? And you've got uh, very stark examples such as the underground map that we have uh, of Glasgow. Say underground map, we call it the Clockwork Orange because literally it just does go around in a circle so it's nothing nearly as complicated as the London underground map. But if you look at that map, it takes you from um, the west of Glasgow to the east of Glasgow <coughs> in what is literally a 15 to 20 minute journey if you're lucky and you lose um, seven years worth of your life. So, literally, uh, if you grow up in the west of Glasgow, you're going to live seven years longer than your counterpart who's born at the same time as you. So, we know that there are, there are real issues going on in our society. There are real issues of deprivation and lack of opportunity for uh, our communities. And obviously that is then replicated across different parts of the country. And in Scotland, one of the challenges we've got, uh, and I'm not going to go into the Barnet consequentials, but is the fact that we have a very different uh, geography uh, taking place. Uh, and on that basis, I work for the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities. There are 32, and probably for colleagues in England uh, and, and many other parts of the world, in some senses, there's a notion that, well, actually, at least you've only got 32, so it's easier to bring 32 together than it is the hundreds that exist elsewhere. But that is very spread out. Uh, and we, yes, we all have to deliver the same services uh, to our communities. Uh, we have to offer the same life opportunities to our communities, but we have all very different and distinct challenges in doing that. Whether it be having islands with populations of literally a handful of people uh, to uh, the mass, uh, mass urbanization of Glasgow, and I say mass, but it's still 600,000 people. And uh, obviously some of the uh, the glaring disparities in, in uh, life opportunities there. Um, we've got that challenge of, of how do we do it better together. And on that basis, we had, Christy, it set out the agenda for public service reform. It looked at the notion of subsidiarity. How do we push power back down into the streets? Uh, in 2014, COSLA was behind the Commission on Strengthening Local Democracy that set out seven principles of democracy, subsidiarity being the second one, but probably the most important one at the start being uh, sovereignty. Let's recognise that actually power should and always will exist out there in the streets, in our communities, in the homes and, and the people that we are trying to serve. And so... That was, yet again, another nod towards we're on this journey, but we need to take action. Democracy needs to work more effectively and meaningfully for the citizens that, that we are uh, serving. And in 2015, Scotland came up with the Community Empowerment Act. And as part of the Community Empowerment Act, and, and where I kind of start to come into part of this story that we're on just now, uh, we started to explore participatory budgeting. Just as one way to look at how do we uh, increase participatory democracy in Scotland? How do we start to get people back engaged 
in their lives and the day-to-day -day opportunities that they've got and the decisions that affect them. And I suppose I, I come from a position of having worked for a Scottish local authority, one of the, uh, the, the five largest local authorities in Scotland, and hearing the, the comments of uh, language such as we've got people who are seldom heard, people who are hard to reach, etc., etc. And I was tasked with doing uh, engagement, whether it be uh, in terms of our budgets uh, um, consultation each year, whether it be with uh, disability groups, with BME groups, uh, with LGBTQ groups, so on and so forth. I was charged with trying to better engage with our communities and link my uh, in that authority, 14,500 uh, colleagues into working better with our communities. And I'm frustrated by comments such as hard to reach, because actually nobody's hard to reach. We do know where our communities are. We know where the, the pockets of uh, deprivation and poverty are. We need to do more about, instead of people coming into our space, going into their space. And that's where this PB journey starts to come into play. And that's where Consul starts to play part of this picture. I'm very aware of some of the questions that have been asked today around um, inclusion uh, with digital sites. When the Labour government uh, launched um, the digital agenda and the rest, the thing that probably, and this, that I picked this up from somebody many years ago, but the thing that got lost from it, because we hear it too often, is that we were taking a digital by default approach. The digital agenda was never about having a digital by default approach despite that maybe feeling like the world we live in. It's simply part of the rich tapestry of how we do what we do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, in terms of our use of console, it's not to say that's where everybody will come and that's how they will engage, but it's part and one of the ways in which we can start to reach out to people. Uh, because yet again, when the Community Empowerment Act came uh, about, the challenges still remain. Well, how do we get out there? Uh, particularly, uh, dare I bring up, um, you know, the challenge of uh, public budgets and public spend and uh, reducing uh, resources and increasing demand because of the dem demographics that we've got. And in just some parts of Scotland, for example, um, the local authority that I uh, used to work for, um, you had an ageing population that um, by the middle of this decade was projected to have doubled. Uh, and that takes us from having uh, a, an older population uh, of 85 plus in the region of a few thousand to uh, 10,000 plus uh, who will be obviously requiring or expecting potentially to use a certain level of services and so forth. And that figure is then replicated as you go from 55 plus and so forth. So. Uh, in that changing demographic and, and that need to get out and engage people more and to, to help people realise that opportunity to, for themselves, um, live healthier, longer uh, lives in their homes, in their communities and not be drawn out of them because of uh, that's the, the best way we can deliver service to you or ultimately at you, how do we deliver services with our communities? How do we get them involved in the decisions about what does that service need to look like? In fact, do we need to deliver it for you? Or if we give you the right means, are you able to go and actually do the things that you want to do by yourself? And therefore, allow us to start focusing in the areas where we need to be more redistributive in what we're doing and start to challenge those really persistent inequalities that exist. So, in terms of that journey then and, and PB, PB was one of the ways to start looking at that. But in Scotland um, in 2017, I came into to COSLA at a time where we made an agreement with the Scottish Government that we would put at least 1% of the total uh, budget of Scottish local authorities uh, to be subject to participatory budgeting. That means £100 million pounds, uh, worth of public money's decision making being subject to the notion of, of participatory budget, budgeting. And we're asking ourselves, well, what does that look like? And it's got to go beyond just simply a small grants model of PB. It's got to get into the deliberative space, the dialogue space, the idea generation, the collective solution uh, thinking that we need to, to have in, in all public services to actually overcome the challenges that, that we, we face.
So that's where PB uh, has started to be one of the mechanisms. And at the same time as that was coming along, COSLA also agreed with the Scottish Government uh, to set out our national performance framework, which sets out eight, I think it's eight, uh, high-level uh, national outcomes for Scotland, including things such as cli uh, looking at climate change, um, etc. Um, and within that, um, we also said we would work on a local governance review. So we'd review how the public sector currently works, we'd look at what the barriers and the challenges are in the system, and we'd, we'd ask ourselves, how do we change these? So where am I going with all of this? Well, I'm going to the, the stage where actually, back to the point about collective intelligence. We can't sit in our offices, uh, in our buildings, removed from the people who use services day to day or don't or who feel removed from those services day to day and come up with solutions that will uh, fix their lives for want of a, a, another terrible expression that we might want to, to, to come up with. We need to engage, we need to listen, we need to realise that some will be able to go and do more and, and we'll, be ha we'll happily do that if we give them the, the empowerment to do that and others we will need to support and we can get to the same place uh, later in life and we can stop future generations falling into the cycles that maybe uh, their, their families are experiencing just now. So console, back the, the point of it for us was this notion that it does do PB and we've done PB with it uh, in Scotland. Uh, we, we had, as part of the PB journey, we had looked at about 60 different platforms that exist uh, around uh, PB. Um, we trialled a number of those different ones in Scotland. We used democratic society to work with colleagues across councils. I travelled around uh, Scotland and spoke to all of the 32 councils. I flippantly referred to Billy Connolly's World Tour of Scotland. I don't know if anyone ever watched that back in the day, but look it up online, he's a, he's a good comedian. Um, and um, the active part I was doing there was going out and actually trying to understand the local circumstance and what people needed. And it's come up with this notion of a digital pilot in Scotland. And now we've got the Digital Office for Scottish Local Government. We've got currently 23 out of our 32 local authorities actively engaged in some form of other in the, in, in the pilot. We've got colleagues in what will soon become Public Health Scotland actively engaged. Colleagues across government as well engaged in how do we use this, this platform to start to better engage with certain parts of our communities but for me, and this is the critical bit, start to spotlight who are the people who are not involved. In a time of limited resources, if we're going to use data and intelligence in any way that we can in terms of um, online systems, it's not to tell us who's there and part of the conversations, it's, who's, it's to tell us who's not involved in the conversations and how can we deploy the resources, the human resources we've got into those spaces and have the same kinds of conversations we need to have with them or perhaps the more challenging conversations that we can have with them. And when I bring together some of those partners that I mentioned earlier on, another one is our colleagues in uh, the Improvement Service. And in Scotland, we've been piloting for a long time and I hope that this digital pilot and, and console yet again is a platform that can help us with this, is um, the, uh, oh, it's just completely gone out of my mind. It's a national identity, uh, not a card, but um, it's an online single service user login that you can use any, um, at, you can access any public service. And the notion of that, yet again, is not to exclude people from, from services, but yet again is to say, well, if we use this and we understand who's on this space, who are the people that are creating ideas and the rest, who are the people are not? and then we can go out and we can be in those spaces and places. My reflection back in 2015 around the time of the Community Empowerment Act was actually people are hard to reach, they're seldom heard because too often we take the approach of, well, we work nine to five, so that's what suits us. And if, you, if it doesn't suit you, then I'm sorry, then uh, that's your problem and not ours. W digital and platforms such as console now enable us to, to live in a world where we can say, actually, we live 24 seven. There's lots of times and places that we can be out in if we want to be. So fundamentally for me, the journey of public service reform, the journey of lo the local governance review in Scotland and how we step up to and um, collectively create the solutions to the challenges that we all face is by not changing what we do as such, but changing the how we do it, the approach, the attitude, the mindset. And that brings me back to the, the point about console then. The pilot is grounded on the, the fact that everybody is needing something. We can spend lots of time and resource 
creating our own unique systems. Or we can recognize actually there is huge value in a platform that gives you lots of different opportunities to engage with people and change the tone of the conversation. And yet again, that's a critical bit for me, is that we live in an online world where people set up Facebook pages and Twitter handles uh, for the, uh, against their, their public services because as public service providers, we tend to push information out, but we don't really take it in very well and we don't know what to do when we do get it in, how, how to best respond. Miguel made the point earlier on, I see console as a collective space, a place where when ideas do come up, people will um, self-moderate, communities will get together and say, that's not appropriate, that's not what we, we expect to see happening, that's not the type of language to use, and so on and so forth. Um, and that people start to be more confident in realizing that actually some of the challenges we face, whether they be in the Scottish borders uh, in Scotland, whether they be in the city centres of Edinburgh and Glasgow and Dundee and Aberdeen, or whether they be on some of the islands in Scotland, whether it be Orkney or Shetland uh, and or in the Western Isles, that actually often the challenges that we, we all experience and are frustrated by it are the same. No better example was that than uh, when I did this present, when I do my presentation or did my presentations to Scottish colleagues and local authorities to get them online. And as people alluded to earlier on, what do we need? We need politicians, we need leaders who are confident in this space to actually allow people into our space and to create ideas. Pull up um, the Madrid platform using Google Chrome, use the translation, and one of the first things that crops up is that somebody wants to tackle the issue of dog dirt in <coughs> Madrid city centre. Every single Scottish household survey we have done uh, since the start to right now and beyond always brings up dog dirt as the, as the challenge. So no matter what language you speak, no matter where you live in the world, some of the issues that we are facing quite clearly are very much uh, the same. So collectively, can we not come up with a solution for what those might be? So the journey now in Scotland, and this is me wrapping up, sorry if this has been a bit of a, a ramble through the Scottish countryside for you, is that um, the notion is we will have a shared site, not just for Scottish local authorities, but for those public sector partners as well. We will change, we will go on, sorry, the journey of trust with our communities. I believe that, that, that communities anywhere will trust public services to do their jobs well if uh, we, we are open, honest and transparent in how we do our day-to-day -day business. I think the journey of trust is huge for actually the officers to go to communities and re recognise that actually, A, you're a community member yourself. You live and you, you, uh, you work and you do all the main manner of things in those spaces. So you should be confident to, to go out and be in the, those spaces and having conversations. And on that basis, when, when we do that, um, the... The console platform is one of the ways in which we can say this is a portal for Scotland. This is a window into decisions and discussions and debates that we can have. First and foremost in the debate section of console, I say to colleagues straight away, don't dive in. Allow people to talk. Allow communities to have that conversation. It's not your place to jump in and start justifying or arguing against maybe the notions that, that, that they are putting forward. It's your opportunity to sit and listen and look and say, well, actually, what can I take from that? How do I go out and reach out to, to people in those different places? How do we create new safe play uh, areas? Uh, how do we better look after our roads? What do we do for our schools, for our care homes, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Be confident that actually the conversations are a worthwhile thing. And in Scotland, I, I'm really interested in trying to help develop um, colleagues around the world the notion of the multi-tenancy version of the site. Make it a place where you can come in uh, at the national level if you want to influence uh, government um, <laughs> discussions, or make it a case of if you don't care what is happening in Holyrood or Westminster or whatever your national government might be, but you only really care about your street and the people around you, then actually console's one of the ways in which you can do that and you can do anything and everything in between, but it needs to be that collective and shared space. And one of the key messages for me was, uh, and Nectus um, spoke to it as well, the fact that it's open source, there's a more inherent trust because actually we can work with communities to develop it as we go along and see a different vision for it and change it as it needs to change. So that's the bit of the journey that we're on in Scotland. Hopefully that's useful and I'll uh, stop there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Simon.